Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. I'm your host, Jillian Leslie. And for those of you who know me, I love building online businesses with my husband, David. We are in the process of building our newest business called Milo Tree Easy Payments, and it is all about helping you monetize your community with starting a membership. We're in this new world where we pay for subscriptions. So you pay for your Amazon Prime subscription and Netflix and Hulu and all of those things. Well, by creating a membership, people subscribe to you. It is an amazing way to turn on a new revenue stream and it's really not that difficult. I want to help you do it. If this sounds interesting to you, please head to milotree.com slash beta tester and I'll reach out to you, hear about what you want to build and show you how we can help you do that easily. So again, milotree.com slash beta tester. For today's episode, I have my new friend Mia Voss on the podcast. Her blog is Mia Voss Live. And she is definitely a micro influencer. You will see she has a lot of passions about a lot of different things. And she knows how to use her voice to elevate brands, elevate causes. I think she's really dynamic, really interesting. And she goes against my advice, which is always niche down, niche down, because she's got her finger in a lot of pots and she's been able to really grow a successful business. I think you're going to like this. So without further delay, here is my interview with Mia Voss. Mia, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on. It's great to be here. We met on a Facebook live. I was doing a Facebook live on the tailwind show with Elisa Meredith and Jeff C and you were there and Jeff's like hey that's my friend Mia and then we connected and then I went looking at what you do on the internet and I (laughs) reached out to you and I said Mia would you come on my show and I'm so honored it's always fun to hear what you I see what you're doing I went and looked at some of your guests as well and then share just the adventures because right now it's definitely an interesting adventure the I love world that. in general. So I know nothing about your story. And I said, let's record it so that I can hear it fresh with everybody. So sure. will you share your entrepreneurial journey, how you got online and where mm-hmm. you are today? Yes. Thanks for, like I said, thanks for having me. So the entrepreneurial journey began for me as, as a definite in 1999, which I'm here in Denver and I had always worked in offices. So I had bounced around a little bit in different industries. I actually started out as an insurance agent when I was 18. <laughs> like, the, does that not sound like the biggest news career at all? But if well, you wait, story- especially by the way, wait, especially looking at you, because you look so happening that I, I like, you're not, you don't look like an in- insurance agent. I have to say, I, you've it, got platinum blonde hair, you've got funky eyeglasses, you've got I bright do. red lips, like you mm-hmm. do not, I, you do not scream insurance to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you know what I want to do is give a little plug to insurance because that is the backbone of how things work. And if you have an insurance agent that knows your story, and so being a natural storyteller, I didn't even know it then, but you go and talk to your clients and you learn their story. Mm. You learn what is their needs in their business. And that could be anything from, I worked in Illinois and we had the University of Illinois as our account. And so the very first Cray supercomputer was under our account because that was at the U of I. So cool stuff like that. Um, as it's interesting when, like I said, not knowing I was a storyteller back then, but it was kind of the beginning of it. And then I grew up in Illinois, but then I moved to New York city when I was 23, I didn't have uh, a job lined up. Now this was in the (laughs) eighties, this was in 88. And uh, so pre cell phones and, and went there and, and did insurance. So it was, it was such a interesting life to grow up in central Illinois and then move to New York and, and be a, um, be, um, almost an anonymous person in this very big city. And, but again, always worked in corporate jobs. I decided to move to 
Denver and after being in New York for seven years. And actually that was when I did start. I, I take that back on the date. I was so tired of corporate America that I bought a house cleaning business and just decided I am checking out. I'm not dressing up and I'm going to uh, hire uh, teams and just you know, be that backbone of people's lives as well. And that actually led to one of my current jobs now, which is in inspection, because I learned how houses were designed either well or poorly when you clean it. <laughs> wow. Isn't that funny little yeah. thing? I, I like finding the, the fascination and the curiosity and everything clearly. So, cause that also another unsexy job is house cleaning. <laughs> Yeah. An inspection. Yeah. And then how did you end up becoming an internet personality? So that, that leads, um, because I, I had started a, a building inspection that's called punch work and I was working with architects when I, when I sold my house cleaning business, I just got a job working as a secretary at a architecture firm and then started to learn about drawings. And this was back in the nineties and, and, uh, re- learning how to read drawings and just again, curiosity, and then I ended up, um, you know, we had a couple downturns here, obviously, uh, really went into entrepreneurship when I started the, my own inspection business in uh, 2001, but then I ended up really getting online in 2008, again, with a downturn. So guess what they weren't doing? Building the buildings that I was inspecting. So I ended up getting online and uh, working with some local entrepreneurs here, helping to publish some books to spotlight and highlight female entrepreneurs. And in doing that, that's when I really started getting online and and learning about everybody's personal brand and how they put that out to the world. And how cool to, I'd been working with men on job sites at that point for, oh my gosh, like eight years. And then to be working with female entrepreneurs in Denver was a really fun transition. And and that's really when I started getting into social media and Google Plus, I was a big fan of for a while. Rest in peace. Google yes, Plus. exactly. Yes. I was, <laughs> I was on that bandwagon as well. So how Were did you? you think about creating a business online and how has that evolved over time? How did you brand yourself? Like what were you when you started and what are you now? Sure. I, initially, I, I thought that I wanted to be a social media manager because I was working on with all these different brands and, and really channeling a lot of you know, seeing, seeing how they were putting them, themselves out there, but knowing their story and that it wasn't merging. And so I was doing a lot of brand management. And then I realized that I really, uh, I didn't want to necessarily be the behind the scenes person. And the reason being is again, back to the storytelling, because it, while I was being a social media manager, I was also doing an online show on Google plus called the, the Mia connect power chat. Initially I had it as social media. And then I really was like, I need to be goofy. I need to, I need to get my own brand of humor out and I cannot have this as a, a business. So at that point I, w- I just would start talking to people and interviewing them. And that's actually how I met. Uh, I just, I met some interesting people. I got connected to a lot of shelters and, and interviewing them, a lot of educators. I got to interview. Oh, um, the men are from Mars, women are from Venus, John. Oh, I just forgot his name. Um, but that author and, oh, just John Gray and Temple Grandin was one of my favorite interviews. She's a, a pioneer in um, autism and okay. she's actually a professor here, but she's very famous for a TED talk called the world needs all type of minds. So that was the really fun thing of just branding myself as an interviewer online. I had sponsors at the time too. And then of course, Google plus kind of bit the dust and, and there's been some bounce arounds with Nearcad and Periscope and uh, things like that. And, and, you know, now I've really just focused on, I love that everything can be a broadcast tower, which is super fun. So I've, okay. Right. Yes. And then I, I started doing travel blogging in 2015 as part of that as well. And I was leveraging all those relationships I'd been making mm. for mm. those last six or seven years. Now, how do you make money as a broadcast? I'm going to call you a broadcaster. Does that sound sure. right? Blogger, broadcaster, podcaster. How do you monetize yeah. this? This it can depend on, on what it is. So I do work with brands. So brands have paid me to uh, represent them as uh, I call myself a very 
I have opinionated opinions. <laughs> so don't ask me to talk about your stuff if you don't really, really hear me talk about your things as well. So uh, with the podcasting, it's sponsorships with the brand ambassadorship. It's uh, also working with them and they hire, either hire me, they'll, they would go on a trip and they would pay me now. Of course, everything really changed 18 months ago. So I'm literally, you're sort of seeing me in this nascent journey of coming back out and seeing, am I going to be doing uh, traveling still? I have been doing the podcast and this whole time I've kept that building inspection business going oh, so that when things ebb and flow, I'll be, you know, I'll, the last major trip I took, I worked with a company called Hills of Africa Travel, and they brought me on a three-week trip to write about it. So I was paid and then the trip was paid for. Um, and I created a ton of content to show what this experience was like as well. So in that meantime, I had gone from like a job site with a hard hat and then, you know, went off on this trip and then came back. So I did stay busy as an essential worker during the pandemic um, because they still had people going on job sites and getting them built. So wow. I like had, I have weird little niches. I just have yeah. a basket of them. And I really encourage people to be okay with that. It's not flighty. It's, <laughs> you can, you can niche down on a bunch of cool stuff. I think people think they can only have one niche. Okay. So let's you discuss can have, this. Yeah. Let's talk so about that. If I were to say to you, tell mm -hmm. me these specific niches that you mm -hmm. are in, what are they? Yes. And where in those niches, you don't have to give me figures, but where are you mm -hmm. making the most money right now? And sure. which ones are you enjoying the most right now? Because those might not be the same answers. And it, and it depends and it ebbs and flows. So that's a great way to quite to position that question because, you know, during the pandemic, I, uh, I, I couldn't imagine traveling. And, uh, so that for me was like, zzz, you know, I, I just, and I really kind of shut that down. I would do product reviews and things like that. Not enough to make a living off of necessarily, because I really was sort of drawn in for 18 months as I was reevaluating what did light me up, what did mm -hmm. fire me up. And, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I don't know if I will go back to the travel blogging piece necessarily because you are as fun as it is. It's a lot of work. And so in some ways, as I look back and I repurpose a lot of my content, I go, Ooh, I wasn't really able to stay present because I was working mm. two trips to Italy. Wonderful, wonderful. But I was, I was on the clock with both of those as well, which I do love, but I don't know if that's necessarily what I want to do. So for right now, this building inspection business, I get paid a ton of money to boss men around sister. And I'm <laughs> here for it. I'm here for it. And it's also really the, the piece I love about building inspection is, is making sure that things are built well, that mm. it's represented well for companies that are building them and designing them, that the people that are the end users that are living in that building or staying in that building, enjoy where they are and that it's safe. Mm. Okay. So, yeah. right. So you I get have fired this, up like, about that. So you're like in the real world and mm -hmm. you're kind of virtual. I am both. Yes. Yes. And, and so the virtual piece served very well, obviously during the pandemic, because I could still represent and do a lot of things. One other weird niche that I have that isn't paid for, but it's a server or it's something that's provided to me is I work with car companies as well. So car companies provide fleets to these management companies that they then loan out to, you know, uh, car bloggers and mommy bloggers and influencers to put, to use in their everyday lifestyle. So for the past six years, I think I usually review, uh, or feature cars. And I love doing that because another piece of my brand is female buying power. It is so underrepresented as much as we talk about it. It's really still not acknowledged how much uh, the lion's share of overall purchases are made by women. The decisions are made by women may not necessarily be the funding. Unfortunately, we're, we're, right. now we make dollar for dollar. I know you asked for it, but, but you can't always make dollar for dollar when you're in the corporate world because we are only paid 75 cents on the dollar. So that important distinction of, of how much women are involved in these buying decisions is, is really part of my brand as well to, to represent that. So do bring, okay. So you are, you're kind of boots know, on the ground the with your yeah. inspection business yes. and how much of your time would you say you're spending on that versus all of your virtual stuff? 
Uh, it's very conservative. So like, it, it's like when people get hired for a movie set and they're just on that for like two months. Right. And then they have a bunch of time off. And that is something right now. I, I will have another project starting. Uh, it's very cool. It's an old, what was that? Uh, Emily, it's an old Emily, Emily Griffith school here in Denver that one of my favorite developers, they buy properties and then they turn them into hotels. Uh, they're turning that into a really cool hotel. So I'll be doing that from October to probably January. Okay. And then I intersperse that as well. So I usually do about two or three projects a year. I could do more, but talking about what lights me up yeah. as much as I love it physically, it is demanding. Okay. You're, you're on a job site. You're around chemicals. You are, um, I go the end during a time when it's not complete. So you have to have hard hat safety, vests, steel toed boots. Um, you know, really your wits about you, uh, when you're, when you're on the job site and then the energy wise too, as much as I joke about, yes, bossing men around, it is a lot of energy to be in this very, uh, masculine space and come in and say, you're not doing that right. <laughs> <laughs> I could only There's imagine. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's say then I, so like, are you driving a car right now from one of these companies in a fleet mm -hmm. and do you get to like I, swap out your cars and write about them? I do. I usually, the, 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 probably the busiest, the busiest year that I had was 2019. Um, I did, I think four trips uh, I went to Lake Tahoe and then I connected with a car dealership in Lake Tahoe. That was a friend of my friend from Toyota. And then they gave me a car to drive. And then I took pictures and wrote about it and talked about the performance more just as a everyday user, not a torque kind of girl. You know, I don't, I don't get into those, those weeds, but um, yes. Yeah, so that year was super, super busy. And I believe that I was driving test, test cars for 26 out of the 52 weeks. So that was, that was busy. My car was very dusty this week. I'm actually going to be driving a, I need to actually look it up. I know it's a big, uh, pickup truck that, uh, am I driving the, the, a Chevy? Yes. They, I, I just got the Mon That's called the Monroni. That's the, the, you know, that sheet that sits on the, on the window that tells you all the details of the car, the costs yeah. and all the, yeah. that's, that's a Monroni report. I call it, it, I call it its birth certificate. And um, what's really cool about this piece in particular is I've been able to interweave not only the, the marketing piece that I love, that's part of my brand as a brand ambassador, but I use the cars for good in the community. And then I write about it. So mm -hmm. for instance, uh, there's, a there's a group called Colorado Pet Pantry that I will talk about as long as the day is because they're the most well-run uh, not profit, non for profit here in Denver. That what they do is they uh, help gather donated pet food and then they work with local food banks as well. And so they distribute the pet food at the people food banks as well as different little drop areas. And then people can donate as well. And especially in the pandemic, how much that helped keep pets with their families because we, mm. we were all so broke or couldn't get mm. out. So see how my heart soars when I, think I about do. that. But what I do is I use the trucks and then I see how much pet food I can stick in these cars <laughs> and, uh, and deliver that as well. So I combine the, the function of what that is with how the car works and it makes me so happy. How do you get your social media posts seen by more people? Well, the simplest way is to grow your social media followers, but that isn't always simple. But with the Milo Tree pop-up app, it is. And the best part about Milo Tree, it will not slow down your site. It plays really well with your ad network and you can even set it so it only shows to your visitors when they are about to leave your site. Feels like magic. Head to milotree.com to learn more, sign up for your account, and you get your first 30 days free. So what are you waiting for? And now back to the show. Are you pitching yourself to brands? Are brands pitching themselves to you? And if you had any recommendation for somebody who's going to listen to this and go, mm. she's cool, 
She's doing cool oh. stuff. I want to do what she does. Maybe not yes. the inspection part because that seems kind of <laughs> hardcore. But like, I want to drive around and deliver pet food, like, and feel yeah. good about myself in a freaking crazy ass pickup truck. Like, yes. that sounds incredibly exciting. But how do I do this? Like, how would yes. I go about living the Mia life? Sure, sure. And that that is that that's that uh 10 year overnight success situation where it's just taken so long, which you know, literally it, it almost stems back to, to 12 years ago when I started doing interviews. And so because I was showcasing people in these interviews, I was building all these uh this I say credibility as in like one people know I'm not going to talk about anything I don't love. Mm -hmm. So there's an authenticity and you, we lost a lot of that with a lot of influencers in the last five or six years, especially when you find people that are just um, doing any shilling, anything to mm -hmm. get free stuff. Mm -hmm. So please don't do that. First of all, um, it, it's very hard. It's always work one. So think about that. The first question I always want people to ask themselves with that is, so who's listening to you if you are going to talk about it? Mm. And I think, and I'm, I'm what's considered a micro influencer. If you go take a look at my numbers, they are, they are not huge numbers, but I'm very consistent in what I post. And then there is interaction with what I post as well. And I, I weave a story in that. So I've, I've been coaching people a lot. I just did a talk called, um, how to integrate, reintegrate into the new normal. And one of the things that I talked about is that people really need to become their own little mini influencer brand ambassadors for everything. And that means if you went to a restaurant that week, you talk about that, you take pictures, be like, oh my gosh, I love this place, especially right now with everybody coming out of the pandemic. You can really become a hero in your community just simply by sharing things, talking about the great things that they did, your vet, your car wash, anything. You can become a, a cheerleader for anything in your world. So would you and be that, posting this like on Instagram? Like, like yeah, let's say I go out for you, this great meal at this restaurant mm -hmm, where people mm -hmm. seem happy and I want to yeah. give them like props. Sure. So what would you do? How would you do this? Yes. And I, I just want to add the caveat that everybody needs to find their own little recipe because what happens is when I tell people this, they get very overwhelmed. Their eyeballs get like the, like the fire hose uh, of information. And they think, oh my gosh, I can't do all of that. You start with what you're comfortable with. And that could literally be a Facebook post and just say, oh my gosh, this was so fun. Look at this fab meal. So excited to get back out again. I felt really safe. The chef came out and said, hi, just tell a little mini story. Just like when you post about anything. And I have to tell you, and I bet you probably noticed the same thing because of the way the algorithms are, I just get presented with too much schlocky stuff and not a story as much. So when I see mm -hmm. pictures of, um, my friend's baby, that's like covered in chocolate because they loved what they had at the restaurant or, and then, you know, the, like that kind of post I'm like, Oh, that's so cute. And then, um, my suggestion would be, I, I love Instagram stories. So that's super fun because let's say I'm at a restaurant and I tag them in that that shows up as, as a notification for that restaurant. They can reshare that back out that mm -hmm. magic of Instagram mm -hmm. stories. And then for me, I actually have boards of all the cars. And so I can share all those stories to that. That's a little higher level, but just on a, on a, a, a simple level, you can, you can do stories, you can do uh, a post. You can, I, I actually love Twitter. I mean, I, it's fun. You can, you can link Twitter to that as well. Just make sure that you're tagging them. Yeah. And then if you're a business, you better be listening because that you're leaving money on the table. If somebody is commenting and sharing your information and you are not sharing that back or acknowledging them. So when I get companies that acknowledge me, I don't care who it is. It makes me so happy. Like I went home to Illinois last month and my parents had a new skylights put in by this local company, uh, vet owned. I really dug what they were about. And so I took pictures of the installers and I, uh, I posted a review to Google maps. Now this is going to be, this is, this is a, the pro pro tip. So you can create these Google, you know, the, I have, you know, I have a Google account. So I, when I'm looking up on Google maps, I can post photos mm. to Google. And then because I've been doing so many reviews, I have clout as a contributor who actually contributes as opposed to just this one guy who has no picture. And all he did was like crappy reviews twice. Like who really dude, I'm not really 
you seem disgruntled, not bona fide. So if you start using your voice to do that, it's so much fun. Oh, that is so interesting. Okay. So what so that's hear, a great way to start. That's a great way to start. That saying whole thing. is mm-hmm. like you, it looks like you lead with your heart. So you're not sitting oh. here saying, okay, what is my strategy? And what are the five mm-hmm. points? And how do I do this? You are authentically mm-hmm. going into the world with integrity. Mm-hmm. You're finding stuff that excites you because you yes. seem like a person who gets lit up from a whole host of <laughs> random things. <laughs> I and if you, and even if you find something like skylights, I mean, maybe mm-hmm. you're an inspector, so it kind of fits, but yeah, it, it, did, it, it did, but, but it was more like, thank you for taking good care of my, good care my of parents. my parents. Absolutely. Is that's what I wrote. I mean, because I actually haven't been to that business. I didn't hire that business, but I was there when they were helping my parents have a, have a safer space to live in. I mean, can you can't get any, any better than that of saying, thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I'm not all sunshine and roses either, because if something's getting on my nerves, if I see that it's, um, they're not treating somebody well, I mean, you can use your voice for social justice as well, Mm. right? If you can be in a restaurant and say, Hey, you know, I, I saw your staff, um, not treat someone well on the flip side, you can also go in and, and really help them. I just saw this article the other day that really hurt my heart actually. And it was saying how restaurants are reporting this increase in, and I just out same. of, con- I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Disgruntled yes. out of control yes. customers. Now we are in the middle of a supply chain issue. Yes. We oh, are and, in the middle of- a, there, there's like a high, there are not enough people. And, the, and a people issue. That's right. So we have supply chain issues. We have staffing issues. We have people, they're coming out of the pandemic mm-hmm. too. Do you think they're immune from depression mm-hmm. and anxiety and what we've all went through? And so I, I really, it really kind of made me up my game on going back through my pictures and being like, I want to support these restaurants that are wow. do, doing a good job. And I promise you, I just hope somebody acts that way in front of me because I'm going to record it. <laughs> And I'm going to out it. And I think being advocates and cheerleaders um, and really letting people know that we, that we care is just super important right now. And, and again, that leads back in answering that question of what if somebody wanted to do that? This is where it starts. Mm. This is where it starts. And, and you may not be hired by companies. I'm, I'm not doing a bunch of super high level things because I don't want to really want to do that right now. I, I just like this little piece that I do. I like having my, uh, my cars, my brands that I work with and my podcast and my hard hat. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Let's talk it's about fun. your podcast. Yeah. So your pod was, we talked about it beforehand. It's called mm-hmm. the S H like bad word. We don't mm-hmm. talk about, and I'm only yes, not ma'am. saying it because I'm trying to have my podcast be clean. There's like a thing. Yes. Uh, so mine by nature is not, so (laughs) mine isn't either, to be honest with you. I mean, my nature is not, but my podcast, (laughs) I've kept it very clean. So talk about the podcast, what inspired Mm -hmm. you to create it when you did, do you monetize it? What's it for? What does it mean to you? It's such a great extension of this passion that, that you caught that, that I, that I have, uh, it actually started about, I was interviewing this guy named Peter Shankman. This is this was about six years ago. Um, just because I'm I was so fascinated. He's a kind of a I wouldn't say a political pundit, but he's been on CNN a lot. And I met him through uh, some circles. And he had just launched this podcast called Faster Than Normal, and it was about uh, recognizing having ADHD as not as a um, as a as a uh, as a malady or as as a downfall, but how you can harness that for your mm. brain. It's fascinating. I think he's still doing it, but it's called faster than normal. So I was interviewing him and he was talking about brain function at ADD. And I was like, man, I think I have ADHD, <laughs> right? This is the, about six years ago. And I was just convinced why well, I go to my doctor and I start talking about my symptoms. She's like, you're, you're perimenopausal. She's like, that brain fog is part of it. And I was like, who's Perry? What is, what, what is happening here? And I was about 49 at the time. And, and so it was interesting, even with how nice that she was, the information that I was given that I walked away with was very minimal. I was given some advice and some information and a prescription for an antidepressant. And I was like, oh my gosh, this, this is it. Now this 
is ish. We're not talking about. Um, I didn't actually launch the podcast. I just kept talking about it and getting more and more mad and, and gathering information and, and, and quite frankly, trying to navigate my own world of, of being in perimenopause. I'm now fully menopausal now. And I talk about bioidentical hormones, which if you hear the snorting, that's my friend. She, she's sitting behind me and she's decided she wants to wake up and, and let you all know she has nasal passages. So, um, so that, that literally was when I started realizing, oh my word, there's so much that we're not talking about that's either covered in shame or misinformation or, uh, yeah, there's still a lot of things that we just think we can't talk about. So that was the inspiration for it. And I, uh, with the pandemic, I, the, the universe brought me a friend that wanted me to actually be a brand ambassador for his web design company or his web production company. And then same thing with him. He pivoted during the pandemic. He said, I'm going to start doing podcast production. I said, all right, let me be your guinea pig. And so we started, I started working with him, shout out uh, to Drew and Helix Interactive is the name of them. What did so, you say it again? Um, Helix dash interactive, H E H E L I X dash interactive.com. And they, they, oh, they do everything. They do a blog post for me and all that good stuff and and make it sound good. But that leaves me open. And I talk about a lot of potentially triggering issues, but the guests that I have on are, are it's lived experience. So we just did one on OCD, which I learned so much about that. And that's definitely a headphones one. I will let you know, because there's, there's a a lot that we discussed that's again, covered in shame and, and, and shrouded in mystery. And the more that we talk about it, and I will tell you a quick story. What was so interesting is I did that show. And one of my cousin's kids, I just call her my little niece. She's uh, 18. And I didn't know anything about this, but she shared that podcast and said, I've been living with this for two years. I haven't talked about it. And she outed herself in this glorious fashion and shared her story along with that. I was like, drop the mic. I'm done. I'm- well, you mean you in- then interviewed her or she was, I haven't, in- I, I haven't interviewed her yet. She actually took my post and shared that publicly oh, on social media and said, this is me. This wow. is what I'm going through and, and, and put that out to all of her family and friends. I get teary eyed thinking about it because I didn't know that. And so just me having that mm-hmm. guest on gave her some mm-hmm. information to share her story and then uh, drop that, that um, secrecy. And um, I was like, oh, my job here is done. <laughs> like, wow. Okay. So I first of all, do. do you have yeah. ADHD or are you I just- do- I do like, not. Is, it was, bra- it was brain fog. It's okay. brain fog. That's part of, uh, and that that's part of it when you just can't focus. And, um, I do not, but I was able to get like, go on that journey and mm-hmm. then go on the journey that of the lack of information. And so for, for me, especially even before the podcast, I've been on this journey of uncovering how underserved we all are in different ways. And, and also in the last two years, I really upped my game as becoming a, I call it an actionist mm, uh, activist like with, with social justice because it needs to be action. It can't just be posts hashtag. and, and hashtags, black squares <laughs> on, and, and, uh, and uh, platitudes. It has to be action. So I've been able to loop that into my brand as well. So uh, your podcast, when did you start it? Last Good question. Um, I think I'm at almost a year. I started it last September. I believe I have 30 seven episodes. So, okay. and, and the topics really, you're talking about are women's stuff, menopausal stuff, mental health everything. issues, anything that like, what have been your favorite topics? Oh gosh, don't make me pick the baby. <laughs> no, but I, I, I love the very first one I did actually was with my podcast producer because he actually has a, a, a podcast called the anxious truth. And uh, so please follow that one as well. Uh, I have, I have tried to really mix it up so that I, that it, there's a, a, a very, a variance of it. Um, I've had some, one of my favorite ones actually was, we just did one on toxic masculinity mm. with my, the son of a friend of mine who has worked in the uh, adult sex edge, uh, sex education world. And um, he's just so brilliant. And it was such a good conversation, but I learn so much. Medical gaslighting was also a very interesting topic, which I knew was a part of all of our worlds of when you are told, oh, it's 
Oh, interesting. It's, it's nothing. nothing. And, it's in your and head. so it's in your head. It's that's just the normal. Right. And oh my goodness, that's really, really common too. A lot of racial uh, social justice pieces, uh, mental health. Yes. My one friend, uh, education about being a breast cancer survivor, uh, spectrum we've done, uh, on the, the autism spectrum. So, uh, you name it, come, come bring it to me. I'd love I to love talk that. about it. Okay. <laughs> so do you monetize your podcast or is this a labor of love? This is a labor of love right now. I do have uh, sponsors that just, you know, through anchor, they just, you know, pay a little bit. Um, I am going to be, as I said, you're kind of catching me as this like, little bit of the coming out of the pandemic where I, I sort of hunkered down and observed as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm deciding what doesn't serve me anymore. And I think a lot of us are doing that everything mm-hmm. from clients to friends to family members, you know, it's just not going to fit in your world anymore. And I think the, I I think I'm going to be leaning more towards, I I have never, I saw one of your questions was about uh, email lists and newsletters. And I, I, I've shied away from that, but I really would like to have a space to put that all in and say, here's my, my next podcast. Here's my next thing. I I am getting back into also of being a spokes. How do I say this? Um, being a, uh, a show host. So I have a company that's called just get out of town. That's a travel company that teaches you how to travel at business class and first class at really, really great rates. And so I am their weekly host. Now I just finished right before here. I'll, I'll, I'll put this in the, give you the, for the yeah, show notes. Oh my of, God. Who doesn't yeah, want to so, travel like that? Well, and that's, see how that worked out for me of just deciding, I don't think I want to be more of that travel blogger where I'm, you know, the kind of the paid, uh, paid on someone's dime, which is wonderful. But again, I I have to stay within those confinements. Now I'm working with this company as their, I'm their, their host. So I host the show. I started out, I helped them wrangle the questions. And, uh, I think that's the direction I'm going to go with travel. So I'll still be doing it and I'll still be shouting it out. It's just going to be in a different thing. So I'm in a little bit of a transition period as well. I love that. I think that being an online entrepreneur, and I know you've got your kind of brick and mortar business as well, Mm -hmm. but if you are not continually taking stock of how the, first of all, how the landscape is changing, because it's always changing and like Google plus, you know, Mm -hmm. turning into TikTok. Like meaning yes. going from that to That's this, right. who would have ever mm-hmm. predicted that? Also, though, checking in with yourself and what is resonating with you, because in order to do this, you have to do it and you have to show up. And I think that yes. when, if I were to say, what is the secret to online business? It's not sexy. It is Mm-mm. showing up and doing the work, even when you don't want to. It, it, it really is doing what you say you're going to do. Uh, and then also, you know, being, being that cheerleader and that can mean also just interacting with people. And uh, so one, doing what you're saying, what you're going to do, showing up, and then also being that person that's just interacting, retweeting, sharing things, not asking for things, not coming out right away. I just, the talk I did the other day really was like an exhortation to people to like, stop asking for free things Mm. um, and stop giving away your free time. Because then when you do that, you save that time so that you can give your time away Mm. to these very select group of people that Mm. you know are going to appreciate it. And on this intuition thing about checking in, that is an essential piece of self-care. And and one of the, one of the uh, silver bullet uh, top tip things that you can do is getting grounded and being so aligned with what you do that Mm. you can see through the BS. Mm. You can get out of things quicker because you know, that's not going to be somebody you want to do business with. It's going to be a waste of time. The quicker you're the hard stop. No, I love no period. You're not going into a big explanation, but all of that comes from that, that internal compass. I love that. And I can feel that in you. Mm -hmm. I can feel it, meaning you're kind of doing a variety of stuff, but it feels Mm -hmm. like each one is aligned with you. And when it's not, you're Mm -hmm. going, do I need this or should I let this go and wait for, find something, attract something else. Now Mm -hmm. you seem like an extrovert. Nope. Okay. Cause that's my next question. Like given that you, I feel like you are, you're moving through the world and you're yeah. loving on stuff. 
I am. And when I you look, whether it be a restaurant, whether it be an installer of, mm-hmm. uh, of yes. skylights or so, solar yes, panel, whatever it is, like you, are, right, you, right. you go through the world and you are, are kind of going, I see you and I love you. And I want to mm-hmm. just give you a, a touch of my heart. Mm-hmm. And then it comes back to you. But that's yes. not an easy way to move through the world in that, again, there's no strategy. There's no like, here's the playbook. I do it this way. And then I do it this way. And I, mm-hmm. I would, assume, talking to you, I would think as an introvert, mm-hmm. how are you putting this out in the world? Because that's a lot of energy. So I'm, I'm not an introvert either. I'm an ambivert. Mm. I am an outgoing introvert. Mm. I am a gregarious loner. I like I to would say, say I, I am the same, by the way. So go on. It, I think honestly, when you start saying that and, and, uh, that I first heard about that term, I'm going to say about six or seven years ago. Previously, I went through a time where I thought I was just a really crappy extrovert mm-hmm. because I thought I was extroverted, but I would get so drained. I'm like, I guess I'm not doing this right because I, I should be enjoying this as much as I feel driven to it. But what I wasn't doing, and I actually learned, um, I learned the first self-care practice about this when I was doing my Google Plus shows because I would do this every Friday and it was a very intense process because sometimes I would have five or six guests on at once and I would do all the pre-show things before I would you know, promote it, set up the event that they used to have. And then on, so but then that would be like on a Friday and then by Friday night, they say, oh, let's go out. And I would get out and be like, when can I get home? <laughs> like, And so I learned to not either not make plans on Friday or I learned to make them short or I learned to uh, get my own ride there or say I only had this much time. So the, the intro, the outgoing introvert, the ambervert uh, puts out a lot of energy, but then they learn what will refuel. And like this weekend I did some, say some things and it was all um, people that I knew were vaccinated, but there's still this energy expelling when you go out of, of still on guard and safety. And, and then there was a lot of people. And by yesterday, I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> nope. And so I just, I just learned. So I think a lot more of us are ambiverts than we think. Mm. So I like that. So mm-hmm. love on stuff and put it out there mm-hmm. when it feels right. And make sure mm-hmm. you are also paying attention. I have to do this yeah. too. If yeah. I do, like, if I do a bunch of podcasts then I need to retreat, yeah. I was going to say just, like jump on, mm-hmm. or I notice when I'm going inward and working on a new project, we're launching this mm-hmm. new product and, yeah. you know, and I've been spending a tremendous amount of energy in it that I can't then be on Instagram as much. Yeah. And I can't, I can't, it's too yeah. much. My focus yeah. is where it is. And then when I finish or come up for air, then I can do that. But it's yes. not, I can't put myself everywhere. I have to, in certain ways, conserve so that I can then really focus and really mm-hmm. go balls to the wall. I don't know if that was mm-hmm. the first word, but you know what I know? Like I need it's to- It's a feisty saying. Okay. So <laughs> that's what I personally need. And I know mm-hmm. that about myself, but I think yeah. you're right. At times I didn't know that. And I, I beat myself that. up going, why can't I do like you saying I'm a bad extrovert. Mm-hmm. So I <laughs> totally get that. I absolutely. Yeah. Get that. So, you as know, it's you- a- oh, so go ahead. Oh, I was going to say you know, a piece that, that goes with that too, of what you're saying of like knowing that you, okay, I can't be on Instagram. Um, and I, I, the piece that I am almost fully integrated, but it's also going, so I'm not going to, and I'm not going to feel badly about it. So I just put that aside because then you feel like I should. So mm-hmm. even though you're not going to do it, you might be shooting yourself a little bit over here. Totally. So then if I just say, nope, that's not going to serve me, even though everybody else looks like they're handling just as much and doing the same thing, mm, doesn't matter. You don't know what's going on in their home and their personal life. This is what's for you. And that, that this, I think those boundaries are so good to just quickly set and then stay focused because if you're doing Uh, cool stuff. What I, okay. So my biggest takeaway from you Mm. is that if you are aligned with what Mm. your heart is telling you Mm. and, and I love that you are like a micro influencer. So you're out there Mm. in your community. Like there's nothing Mm. too small. You're not going, Mm -hmm. well, it's not Pepsi that I'm, you know, Mm -hmm. but it's like a small local nail salon 
or whatever yeah. it is yeah. that you're like doing it in your community and you are finding that people just see what you're doing and mm -hmm. it comes back to you, whether that be financially, whether that be in terms of a relationship, but mm -hmm. that you can have tremendous impact and even make money by loving on the people near you. Yes. And who needs it now more than ever are the small people. These big companies, they've got this big you know, thing now. I do pay attention to what they did during the pandemic. I will say I was very aware of what large brands were doing and how they were handling uh, everything from Black Lives Matter to the pandemic to uh, you know, even COVID, the election. Like I want to be aligned with these people when I see them doing the right thing. And, uh, and supporting communities. And, and I'm not saying they have to do exactly what I believe in. I'm just saying, I like how they're aligned. So looking at the bigger brands, making sure you're voting with your tech or with your dollars, with your spending money, but then supporting smaller because that's who needs it. I love that. Okay. Mm. If people want, I mean, I, I highly recommend everybody check out Mia. So Mia, mm -hmm. Where do you send people? How can somebody connect with you? Where do you send people to be like, this is the Mia experience? I would just go to miavoss.live. That is my overall umbrella website. And I have a, a, a link tree link on that as well that has all the different places where I am. Now I am on Instagram and Twitter as Mia Voss on the go, which is what I was before, but now I've just made it Mia Voss live. That has my podcast there, has my car reviews, anything that I've written about, and then all the links to my social, I would start there. And, and then what, maybe subscribe because I may put a newsletter out at some point. I, I do <laughs> recommend you put a newsletter out because yes, I feel a connection to my subscribers. Okay. It's like a much more intimate relationship than your followers because I appreciate they're saying that advice. yes mm -hmm. to allowing you into their inbox. I like this pep talk. I am here for it. <laughs> I, I highly recommend you start that because you mm -hmm. will identify your super fans more easily by connecting to them. They're the ones who, if you put a question at the end of your email newsletter, when you say, I'd love to hear from you or what are your thoughts about that? They're the ones who will click mm. reply. Mm, 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 mm. I like this. It, it just came up for me this week and then I saw it in the, the questions uh, for our pre uh, prep notes. And I was like, oh, there's your sign. Mm. there's your sign. You need mm -hmm. to do that. So I appreciate that. Thank you. What, just one last question mm. on the horizon, as you, as you scan the horizon, mm. what is lighting you up the most right now? Ooh, there's so, so many things I, I would say, uh, doing the brand ambassador work where I can get, I can talk about things that I love that, that really is, has been and the public speaking that I did the other day really lit me up as well of just talking about, and, and this was the message. So this will be my, my parting advice for everything. Um, and I, I came up with this because I was thinking about all the, the, the variants that are coming up and how we thought it was kind of getting back to normal. And, and I, I literally am pinpointing in on finding your new hybrid normal. Mm. And, and I, and that is your, so the emphasis is on your, so that's not what anybody else is doing. And it could be a hybrid for right now, because we kind of thought we were, you know, now we got vaccinated and not as much mass. So now it's, it's, it's gonna, it's going to ebb and flow. And, but I think more than importantly, now more than ever, so many cracks in society have showed up and so many different things that uh, our, our world has changed and how we perceive it and see it. So finding your new normal, setting your, and, and really what's lighting me up is fun, is really honing my compass too. <laughs> I can't do anything if I'm just over here, you know, not grounded. I love that advice. I really do. Well, Mia, I have to say, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah. I feel like I don't know. I'm also trying to figure out kind of what my new mm. normal is. So I yes. appreciate that as a prompt for me because mm -hmm. I will be cogitating on that. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Cogitating. Excellent word to end on. I love it. <laughs> thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. I hope this episode gave you a lot to cogitate on. I really enjoyed talking to Mia 
talking about her truth and how she puts that out even in all of the business relationships she has. I really respect how she goes to bat for people and for businesses as she moves through the world. I found that really inspiring. I found it really authentic. If you are enjoying the podcast, and I hope you are because I love doing this, please head to iTunes or go to your Apple podcast app on your phone and please rate the podcast, give it five stars, write a review. I would be so grateful and I might even read it in my next episode. And I will see you here again next week.